Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time? Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe First person I ever shown this place to. Why am I so special? Because soon we'll be Christopher and Mary Robin. We should be close now. Hi, I'm Sophia Jessica with the Fan Carpet, and today we have the pleasure of interviewing Amber Doig Thorne and Nikolai Leon for their new movie Winnie the Pooh: Blood and Honey. The film has had a massive reception worldwide and has taken over 3.5 million dollars in America. How does that feel for you as actors? It's insane. I don't think we've really had films taken that much before. Um, so it's like really overwhelming. It's nice that so many people have gone to see it. I think we're into like the hundreds of thousands of people who've actually seen it now, which is scary thinking that many people have seen your face and seen you act. But at the end of the day, like we act because we want people to see our work. So it's amazing. Yeah, I, I've never been in a film this big. And, and I, I, knew, I knew the reaction would be you know, big, but I didn't expect it to be on this size of big, because <laughs> it's very big. <laughs> That's awesome. And in terms of um, the movie scenes, you've had a couple of p pivotal scenes in the film, uh, namely uh, your face off with Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was that like to come face to face with those characters? So it was really weird for me because I kind of grew up with Winnie the Pooh and I had like all of the little toys. So I'm used to seeing Winnie the Pooh as like, this big like a tiny cuddly toy in my bedroom and now seeing him as like a six foot tall powerhouse like chasing me trying to kill me it was a little bit weird um i didn't think i'd ever be in that situation as an actor and i thought it was going to be funny like before we started filming i was like oh i'm not going to be able to take this seriously but as soon as craig who plays poo and chris who plays piglet as soon as they put the masks on and they were in character it was actually genuinely terrifying so there wasn't much acting involved. It was just me genuinely being scared, like running for my life. <laughs> that does sound scary. I have yeah. To say. <laughs> don't want to swap positions with you in that because I'm not a fan of uh, of really scary scenes. I like to watch it, but I don't want to be that close. And yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be filming it. <laughs> yes. And um, in terms of um, your characters, could you tell us a bit more about how you got into your role and um, how it felt playing those parts? Mm -hmm. You go first. Um, I, I, I just like... Um... I, I watched like uh, the film Christopher Robin um, along with some of the cartoons just to kind of get an idea again because I, di I didn't really grow up with Winnie the Pooh. I was more like a Scooby-Doo kind of guy so I kind of had to do my homework on Christopher. Uh, but I, I find his character very interesting because what I find about him the most interesting is is it all in his head or is it just is it truly you know these animal morphic figures you know but um yeah yeah that was that was kind of what drew drew me to that character the most was is it all mentally in his head or is it just reality, is it reality? yeah mm. and in terms of uh you know i've heard about winnie the pooh and um portraying kind of uh, mental uh, Ill, different mental illnesses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's your opinion on uh, on those do you, do you think it's good to sort of be able to uh show a bit of each type of mental illness on film just so people don't feel you know like it, they're so alone just so that they're they're represented in winnie the pooh whether it's the original or, or this? Do you think that's um, something that people should should watch and um, acknowledge as, you know, it's, it's not rare, it's actually more common these days yeah. especially? Yeah, 100%. I think representation of mental illnesses is so important. And I feel like not just with Winnie the Pooh and Piglet, but like the female characters, for example, I feel like each of the girls are going through something different. Like one of them is going through anxiety, like throughout the film, like I go through like grief and some of them are stressed, like there's different things. So I'm hoping that anyone who's suffering from like any form of mental illness will be able to watch it and be able to relate to at least one character. And I think it's nice that people will be able to see themselves represented on screen, hopefully in one of those characters. 
And um, if we go back to um, the beginning of your careers, mm -hmm. where, what made you sort of want to get into acting? What was your first role? Do you want to go first? Um, um, my, 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 like, uh, I've always wanted to do acting from the very beginning, you know, like just, I had like a whole wall of VHS movies and I would just watch these, you know, every single day growing up and that was kind of, but then growing up, I, I was always told, oh, it's impossible to become an actor. It's very hard. It's very hard. And I, it made me very sad to live with that sort of mentality. But then when I done Streetcar Named Desire and I played uh, Stanley Kowalski in, at school, that was kind of like the eye opener for me. It was like, no, this is, this is what I want to do, you know, and I'll fight until the last breath to get <laughs> here, you know. And I'm sure you, you're glad you kept fighting to get here. Exactly. Very glad. <laughs> And, and for you, what, what was your defining moment, would you say? So my parents joke that I've been performing since I was in the womb because apparently my mum would watch EastEnders and every time the theme tune came on, I'd like kick my feet. And they were like, oh, she's going to be a performer of some kind. I think they thought I was going to be a dancer, but I'm not very coordinated. And then I remember when I was younger, I'd put on like talent shows for my parents and I'd like watch a film and then like perform a monologue or something. And I think it's when I first watched Titanic that I understood what acting was. And I remember being like so overwhelmed with emotions, even though I was so young. And I asked my parents like, what, what is this? And they explained about acting. And I was like, yeah, I, wa I want to act. I want to be acting. And they were like, okay, cool. And then when I was at school, I do like a lot of musicals and pantomimes because I do a lot of comedy. I love comedy. And then, yeah, I just, I've always known, similar to you, I've always known that it's what I want to do. I feel like it's probably like the biggest passion in my life and like I'm happiest when I'm on a film set. So I'm very happy with how things are going at the moment. <laughs> That's wonderful. And did you say, how old were you when you saw Titanic? Very, very young. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably too young. I think I watched it, uh, I remember my parents were sat on the sofa and I was next to the sofa and they were like, oh, it's bedtime. And I like pretended to go upstairs and then I snuck back down. And I think they knew I was there and they just let me watch it anyway. But I, it's the first film that really like impacted me, I think. But yeah, I just remember being very young and being so affected and thinking like, I want to, make other people feel the way that like I felt from watching this like the fact like something on a screen can have such a response emotionally I just thought it was amazing I had that impact with Scarface yeah <laughs> the <film> Scarface. <laughs> that, and I watched that when I was very young which I shouldn't but that was that was when I saw Al Pacino's performance in that I was like wow this is a true actor this is real acting you know like, like raw raw yeah. acting you know from the heart you know it seems like uh, a lot of actors have that kind of like one film they're like wow this I want to do that yeah yeah, yeah. So ev I feel like um, out there there's like a role for everyone and everyone there's a role that someone can play to perfection because you like you said there's some movies and roles that like you just say that actor was born for that role yeah you know? absolutely yeah. Yeah, that's it's awesome. Um, but could you tell us a bit about uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey in your own sort of words, like what, uh, how you would describe this film to people? Mm -hmm. You can go first, because I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Is it like summarising it in a... In terms of this, uh, this edition, you know, the horror Winnie the Pooh, Blood mm -hmm. and Honey, and mm -hmm. uh, what to expect, I guess. A little okay. summary. Okay. In, in, in short, it's uh, Christopher Robin returns to the Hundred Acre Woods, and he's hoping to introduce Winnie the Pooh and Piglet and the rest of his friends to his new wife-to-be. But things don't really go to plan. <laughs> and things get very, very dark and very bloody. And yeah, uh, yeah That's a good summary. It's Another a like <laughs> overarching story where, because this kind of Christopher's story, and then the majority of the film follows a story of like five or six girls who go to a cabin in the woods for like a weekend away and get terrorized by Pooh. And then our stories like kind of cross over. Um, but it's just really nice because I think people have always experienced poo in their childhood, but now it's kind of aimed at adults. So I find it really interesting that now as an adult, it's kind of relevant again in like this horror retelling. And like the film's so cool because it took inspiration from so many like 80s slasher flicks. So I think anyone who's a fan of horror or of Winnie the Pooh, like it kind of marries really well together. So hopefully there'll be a whole new audience that kind of never expected to see a film like this or really enjoy it. Yeah, often crossovers are good because you get two different types yeah. of people wanting to exactly. see the film. Yeah. And you two being a couple in real life, how is it uh, to collaborate together on this film? So I think it's really nice because we'd never met each other before. We turn up on this film set and we basically bonded over our characters. So our characters go through, we realise, like a very similar journey in the film. So they start off quite strong. They suffer from like grief and loss and then... For me, it's kind of revenge. So like in the trailer, we see Piglet kills uh, my character's girlfriend in the pool. She's the one who gets hit with a sledgehammer. So the rest of the film, I'm like, right, I need to get my revenge on Piglet. 
And then for Christopher, Mary, spoiler, uh, Mary gets killed by Piglet. So then the rest of the film, he's kind of trying to appeal to Pooh and get him to like become more humane, but he also wants his revenge. But I feel like it's more kind of retribution in a way for Christopher. Yeah, it's like um, <clears throat> they both go through a very similar journey. They both experience a great loss, but the only slight difference is Alice is more for revenge mm -hmm. and Christopher is kind of more for redemption, I feel like. So I feel like we really bonded over the fact that our characters were kind of going through the same thing. So with your characters, would you say you went on sort of like a character development journey uh, throughout, you know, from the beginning to, to the end? Would you say you, it, that your characters progressed throughout the movie? I think for me, definitely. So I play Alice and I think the Alice at the beginning of the film and the Alice at the end of the film are completely different. Because at the start, I think she knows who she is, but she's helping her girlfriend find herself. So her, she's feeling very vulnerable and very anxious. Whereas like throughout the film, she gains a lot of strength. And I think she really finds herself and she realizes like she needs to fight. Obviously her girlfriend's been killed, but that's what she wants to fight for to kind of avenge her death in a way. So I feel like she definitely gets stronger throughout the film and she grows more of a backbone. And like, she's only really the human character she's the only human character to successfully stand up to either Pooh or Piglet, which as an actor was like really, really cool. When I read the script, I was like, oh, I'm like the one person that actually manages to kind of get back at them a little bit. Powerful. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But I think in the beginning, she's like very chill, but she definitely changes throughout, which is like always so much fun to play as an actor. And that, that also represents reality for some people where trauma changes them. Exactly, yeah. 100%. So it's, yeah, it's good to see that. Yeah. Um, uh, Christopher as well goes through like a, a very um, kind of similar journey. Mm -hmm. He he. He kind of starts off very pure, but then as the film goes on, he goes through a lot of trauma, which thickens his skin a bit and, and makes him tougher. And I feel like throughout the film, uh, Christopher kind of has this still, uh, he fights for this hope that Pooh and Piglet will be okay and they will turn around, they will be better. But I think towards the end, he realizes that there's no saving them. Yeah, they're kind of yeah. a lost cause. Yeah. <laughs> And and in from the film, would you say you'll um, take away any specific memories or uh, any particularly fun or challenging moments? I think for me, like the most fun scene to film was my standoff with Piglet, um, just because I don't think you ever think you're going to be able to take on like one of your favorite childhood characters in real life. Um, so that was super fun. I think for me, the most challenging scene, spoiler alert, uh, was my death scene, just because the way that I die, was it was physically difficult to film. So there was a lot of CGI kind of deaths in the film and mine wasn't, it was just all practical effects. So wow. once people have seen it, they will know what I mean, but it was rather uncomfortable, shall we say. Oh, so that was a challenge. <laughs> it was physically challenging, but like, I'm so pleased with how it turned out and it looked, I think it looked really, really cool. And I think you can tell, some people have said like, they think it's CGI, which really annoys me because I'm like, no, it wasn't. Like, it was me yeah. struggling for the cause. Yeah, when the knife... Dedication. Yeah, they say, like, her death scene, uh, they think it's all, like, CGI or it's going behind. Because I, get, I basically get, like, a knife through my head. But there's a shot at the end where you see the knife's, like, in my mouth and then people are like, oh, it's but fake. Everyone just thinks it goes past like that. Yeah. But actually, it, it was actually in like, the mouth. Yeah, oh and, like, God. I've got, like, a photo of it in my mouth and then someone was like, oh, it's photoshopped. I was like, I why? <laughs> what? It was really weird. It means it's so good that they yeah. think it possibly can't be yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. It has to be like CGI. <laughs> exactly. I will take that as a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's great that you do your own stunts, and it sounds like you know it's something you can put on the resume. Like you know, I'm dedicated, and I oh, it's my on my stuff. resume. Trust yeah. me, I'm always like, oh, I do my own stunts, combat trained. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. And do you have a preferred genre to watch versus acting? Mm. Um, I love like. Um, crime dramas, I love medieval films, I love like noir films, kind of, kind, uh, just like um, very, very, like I, I, I have a big heart for old school films, you know, like Taxi Driver and, and, and uh, Goodfellas, you know, stuff, those type of classics. Films. Classics, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm also a huge fan of Bill Willingham's Fables. Uh, it's a comic book series about fairy tales living in like a modern day society. And I just, I, I love that twist. And it's it's very similar to like Winnie the Pooh changing, you know, fairy tale characters or childhood characters and giving them a kind of darker twist. I, I, I love that, yeah. And, and how about you? And to act in, but also to watch? Uh, yeah, to act, watch, read, all of it, yeah. So you like, you like acting, because some, some people say, I love 
watching horrors, but I, I oh, I love, uh, I don't watch horrors, but I love acting in them. Or is it mm. is it uh, similar for you, or do you like the sort of the same uh, to act in versus to watch in? So I kind of love every genre, and I also love acting in every genre, which works perfectly. I think my favorites are probably to watch and act in like horror, comedy, and I like it when genres are kind of compiled together because it's like the best of both worlds. So like horror comedies, action comedies. I also love like crime dramas. Um, we're working together next on a Viking film. We both love anything historical, anything medieval. Um, but yeah, I'd say for me personally, I enjoy acting in the things that I also enjoy watching because then it means I can enjoy watching it when it comes out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. And it also means that you'll probably be uh, interested in a lot of roles and a lot of types of genres to, to be in. Yeah. It's not like, oh no, I don't want to act in comedies. You, you know, yeah, like exactly. It, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> and um, would you, do you have a, a particular fate? I know you mentioned what got you started into acting, but do you have an all time favorite film now that you would say this is my favorite film? I have, I can never answer this question because I'm like, I have like a top three. So for me, I think it's, well, like the Dark Knight trilogy, if I can compile that into one film, um, Inception and The Prestige. So I think from an acting perspective, The Prestige is just phenomenal. Um, it's Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman and they play like rival magicians. But if you've seen the film, you'll know what I mean by this. Every time I watch the film, I notice like more and more things in Christian Bale's performance. And I'm not gonna spoil the film for anyone who's not seen it. But it's one of those films where I could watch it like 50 times and it is a masterclass in acting. And just for that reason alone, like I can't take my eyes off the screen when I'm watching it. And I just think it's phenomenal. So that's probably like my all time favorite. I have to watch it now. You sold it to me. Yes. Oh my God, yay. <laughs> um, I've already mentioned Scarface, but I, I, if I can add two more, um, it would have to be um, a, lot, a lot of people haven't actually seen this film. It's called The Basketball Diaries, and okay. it's with Leonardo DiCaprio. And Leo's, he plays like a heroin, uh, a basketball player who begins, begins taking heroin. And his performance is so powerful in that film. Like, it, it's it's amazing. And and the second film, I'd say, is um, the Joaquin Phoenix's New Joker. I love the... He's no obsessed yes. with the Joker. I, lo <laughs> I, I love that noir style to that film. I, I just feel like that film has such a grungy, kind mm -hmm. of dark look to it. I, I, and that's the cinema that I love the most. I have seen The Joker, The New Joker. I did like it. Um, I haven't seen uh, The Basketball Diaries, but the fact that Leo's in there, I, I will <laughs> add it to my list. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in terms of The Joker, would you want to play The Joker one day? Is that oh something? Oh my God. Yeah. Who wouldn't? Who, who, who wouldn't? Yeah. I think that's every actor's dream role, you know? But at the same time, it's, it will probably be one of the most difficult roles because, yes. <laughs> you know, there's so many different directions you can go with that character, you know? And, and a lot of them use method acting to really mm -hmm. get into yeah. his mind. Yeah, yeah, just be careful with that yeah. because they go crazy sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That character is very intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, do you personally, what do you personally hope to achieve um, in your life and career if, if you know, you know, from now? Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so I think I've known since I was a child that I just want to act. I think my aim is to make films that make people feel something. So one of the reasons why I like doing comedy aside from the acting, so I like write and produce comedy sketches. Um, I've written for BBC Three for a comedy show that they did. And the thought that something that I'm a part of or something I create could make someone smile. Or like if someone's going through a tough time and they watch something I'm a part of and then it makes their day or makes them forget about their problems. To me, I think that's really powerful. And I think it's kind of a gift that we have as actors. So to me, it would be trying to make a difference to people and having like a positive impact through the form of film. No, that's, that's very important. Uh, you know, so films are therapeutic yeah. and relatable, uh, well, a lot of them. And um, yeah, I personally use films to get over some things. Same. <laughs> it's, it's lovely. It's lovely to contribute to that like in someone's life. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, for you? Um, uh, uh, like, yeah, it's just that I, I, my dream is just to make films where, where people can literally escape, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's the beauty of cinema. And, and just playing roles that I, because I feel like uh, you, you always have to find something in every character you play, something that you love or relate to. And I just, like, my dream is to just play characters that I love and, and have passion for. Yeah, and I'm sure you'll find them fun to play, especially if uh, you know you can dive deep into many different characters. It just sounds it exactly. sounds really fun to do. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of streaming platforms like Netflix and Prime versus cinema, um, what's your opinion on you know so many uh, platforms sort of taking over um, these days? Uh, are you worried for cinema, or you think cinema will always be around? Um, I I think that cinema personally. Yeah, I think that cinema is always going to be around. Just for me, when a film comes out, I would much rather watch it in a cinema because I think it's amazing being in a room with other people and all experiencing the same emotion at the same time. I think it's 
really powerful. And I think there's some films that are made for cinema. So for example, like Avatar, I can't imagine sitting watching that at home. Like you have to be in the cinema, you have to yeah. see it on the big screen, you know, it's made for the big screen. Um, I do think that digital media is taking over. And I think it, it's kind of getting to a point now where the streaming services, they're kind of dominating, but I do, I think and I hope that cinemas will stay around for a long time. But I also really appreciate streaming services because I think it's a lot more accessible. So for people who maybe can't afford to go to the cinema, they can afford to have like a Netflix subscription instead and then watch all of the latest films. So I think it's a really great idea. I just, I hope cinema doesn't die because I love going to the cinema. Me too, it's one yeah. of my favourite things. To exactly. Do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think cinema will die. I, I do worry a little bit about like the platforms. I, I mean, it's a great, you know, thing to just sit at home and watch all of these films. But then again, uh, when when we were at the premiere for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, I kind of missed that feeling of, you know, experience of film together with an audience. And you almost go through a journey together, you know, than just when you're at home, you get distracted with phones or yeah. other stuff, you know. Yeah. And people can pause it for something. Yeah, yeah. And uh or in general, the, uh, the big screen, you're just, you're just, it's the environment, mm -hmm. it's the atmosphere. It's, it's like immersive. It's, it's the yeah. sound, yeah. it's everything. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, no, I don't think it will die personally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really hope yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed, because we'll be fucked. I'll get the whole back yeah. up here like, oh, you know, we, we thought wrong. Yeah. 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 No, but no, so I don't confident. think it's going anyway. <laughs> and um, is there anything you're working on currently that uh, you could tell us about, or, you know, in the near future? Mm -hmm. So do you want to talk about that? Sure. So uh, I, a couple like, during COVID, I, I wrote a script, uh, which is kind of a story about the the final days of the um, of Slavic paganism, and it's when uh, long story short, like King Vladimir like converted Ukraine into um, Christianity, and he kind of um, outcasted all of the pagan uh, pagans. So the story follows a group of pagans who are shipwrecked on England uh, Christian land. So. It, things kind of go wild. <laughs> I can imagine. That sounds yeah. intriguing. Because is it based um, on uh, real life? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's yeah. not just fictional. It's it's based on real what happens. Right, right, right. It's, yeah. it's based of like actual Ukrainian historical, um, you know, events. Uh, ac and, events. Yeah. And yeah, I, I I kind of just wanted to tell Ukraine's true history. You know. Yeah. But it's like it's a really powerful script. I remember he was trying to get me to read it for ages and I had so much on I didn't. And then when I finally sat down and read it, I was like, I'm so proud of you. This is like one of the best scripts I've read in my life, genuinely. I was like, we're making this film. And it's, I think we were saying like as a tagline, it's like a battle for love, a battle for freedom and a battle for belief. Those are like the three key factors throughout the film. Like there's a bit of a love triangle between our characters and my character's like previous partner. And then obviously there's physical battles going on. There's just so many what i love about it most is there's like an overarching story but each character has their own individual story that's going on throughout so it's so complex and like each character has so much development from the start to the end of the film um so we're currently in the pre-production phase we're just finishing editing the script uh, i think we're gonna try and look for like investment and funding soon maybe shoot a proof of concept to get people interested before doing the feature um, but that's the next thing that we're working on together. We're also mm -hmm. doing a horror comedy called Zombikini with Silent Studios, who I've worked with a few times before. They're amazing. And we kind of play a couple in a weird way in that one. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> it does sound really fun. Uh, but no, you definitely got me interested with this uh, pagan Viking Dying one. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Kind of, it's, it's kind of just like a coin flip between Christianity and paganism. Mm -hmm. Kind of the differences between those religions. You know? I personally love uh, paganism. So mm -hmm. I, just, you know, I mean, whether even if it was uh, on the Viking side or pagans, I'd still love to kind of, you know, watch that. So. Yeah. yeah, we'll let you know uh, when yeah. it comes out. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> I look forward to it. So uh, there's going to be a sequel to Winnie the Pooh, Blood and the Honey. Um, obviously your character died, so yes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't imagine you'll be returning. Um, but uh, in terms of involvement, are you, are you going to be back uh, with your character for part two? Um, so Christopher Robin will, I, I, I actually don't know. Um, I, I know the sequel is confirmed, but um, me personally, I won't be returning due to uh, scheduling conflicts and just a, a few creative differences. But um, yeah, I, but but um, I, I I hope them all the best, and I, I know they will do a good job with the sequel. Mm. Yeah. And the way that my character died, I'm pretty sure I won't be able to come back. <laughs> um, like it was such an honor being a part of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. But I've personally decided to just take a step back, so I won't be working with the production company again. 
Um, but you know, I think they have really awesome ideas. Like I think it's really cool what they're doing with Bambi and Peter Pan and all of these spin-offs. And I'll definitely watch their films. And yeah, like you said, you know, I wish them best of luck for the future. I think they're gonna do great things and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do next. Oh, that's wonderful. It's, it's, it's good to know, so we know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And um, lastly, last but not least, um, where could we find you online and uh, for people, you know, to, to follow mm -hmm. what you're doing? So on social media, I'm everywhere at Amber Doigthorn. I'm not very creative, so I don't have a like a fun name. It's just my full name, Amber right. Doigthorn. It's easier to just type exactly, in your name. <laughs> yeah. and that's on like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, everything. Um, I just I think I just use Instagram, which is Nikolai underscore Leon. That's it. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm sure you know people can follow you and uh, see what else is coming out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for the interview. I look forward to seeing this film and also look forward to your next projects. Thank you very thank much. You so thank much. you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more content next time. on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, 